Welcome to Rusi Fail. This week I'm doing a video on the different types of vehicles available in DayZ. Now these are the vanilla vehicles that are available on official servers. Now I'm not technically on an official server, well not at all on an official server. I'm actually on Deer Isle at the moment because Deer Isle has a racetrack on it called Brockenheim. So I'm going to do some racing of these cars and test some things out. But other than being on Deer Isle, these vehicles are exactly the same vehicles as you can find on vanilla official DayZ. So we have a Gunter, we have a Sarka, we have a M1025, uh, which is basically a Humvee, right? We have a truck, which is the MS, uh, sorry, the M3S. We have an Ada, and we have an Olga. Now, each one is kind of um, different, I guess, in terms of what it can and can't do. They all go different speeds. Um, the Humvee is great at off-road. The aid is pretty good at off-road. The truck is very slow, but can go off-road. Um, but they have uh, storage capabilities too. So they all have like boots, I guess, and in the boots, it's a whole heap of space and you can carry spare tires and such. Um, and the truck even has dedicated slots for like barrels and wooden crates and logs and timber and all of that, as well as all this space at the back here. So great for building a base. Um, However, it's very rare to find a vehicle in this condition on the server unless someone's already put some time and effort into it and you get lucky. Usually you find vehicles and they look something similar to this. Now there are crashed vehicles all over the map um, that you can't drive or repair or do anything with. Um, the biggest way to tell if you can, you can get in these vehicles, right? So I can hold F on it and I can get in. Right, the other thing is the interior is in much better condition. Um, so you can see this is a fully drivable vehicle if I fix it up. So to fix it up, what do you need to do? Well, you need to find bits and pieces. So to start with, four wheels is a great place to go. So you can just attach extra wheels to it. Bang, four wheels. You also need, in the engine bay, you need to have these items here. Now, um, this car needs a battery, a radiator, and a spark plug. So there's a battery nearby. There's a radiator nearby too. I saw it on the floor here, I thought. There, I'll take that to my hands. And I might be able to attach it. I'll just drop it in here. And I've got a spark plug in my pocket, so I'll put that in there. Okay, that's basically ready to go. The only other thing it needs is you need to put water into the radiator. If we hop in now and look at the bottom left, you can see that the thermometer, even though the car hasn't run, the engine temperature is already in the red, right? So it has got no water in it so I just so happen to have some water in the back of the car that one's full of water I'll fill the radiator you can use normal water bottles and water from a river no dramas takes a little while you can see the jerry can is only going down maybe a quarter but now the radiator is full if I put this in the back of the car again and this time when I hop in, the gauge is, the temperature gauge is showing very cold. So I can start the car by holding down F. Sorry, by I start the car by holding down the mouse button and I'm good to go. Um, I could drive this car and off I go, wouldn't need all the panels. Let's put the panels on it so it's a little bit quieter. So click the mouse button to turn it off. Hold down F to get out of the car. Right, and now I'll attach some of these panels that I've got around here. So what do I have? I've got a hood, I can put that on. I've got a door, I can put that on. All right, and you can see stuff's going on. I can close them up. And um, this door here, you can see it's a bit beaten up. It's badly damaged, but again, it'll go on the car. You can put them on this way too, I think. There we go, attach. All right, it's on. All right. If I wanted to fix that door up a bit, I can do that as well. You get a blowtorch. No, right. door's got to be open and you can repair it. So we'll just repair that. And you'll see now that that door is now just damaged. So I could get it back up to worn, but that'll do me for now. I'll put this way. Um, if you damage a tire, if they get worn, you can repair them with the tire repair kits. Um, 
one thing to watch out for is your radiator. I'm pretty sure that you can't fix them. I haven't found a way to fix them, um, but you need to make sure that they are pristine or worn. If they are damaged, they will start to lose water. Uh, so you just got to keep an eye on it and top it up as you drive around. Uh, what else haven't I covered here? Um, so you can use a spanner and you can attach things to the car better. So we put that door on, come around here and I can lock that door in place. And what that does is it then prevents someone from just walking up, if they don't have a spanner that is, and stealing my door. So you come in here and you can see it's got the spanner icon over that door. So that's locked into place. You can do the same with the wheels, right? If you want to lock your wheels in place, you can lock them. So I'll lock all these wheels on, just to see, because I do want to do some testing as well. Um, I've heard rumours that locking the tyres on improves the stability and handling of the car. So I'm going to try it, and then I'll unlock them. I might unlock them one at a time and see if it makes a difference. All right, that car is all done. It's ready to go. I don't think I had anything else here I needed to go through. I'll just double check the boot for anything else. I've got to have it open, of course. Nope, I think we're pretty good. We had all of that done. So always a good idea to carry a um, spare radiator. There is a spot on the car for a spare wheel and in the boot I've thrown in another spare wheel as well. All right. So I'm going to go off and do some driving now and test some things out. And I'll roll port back um, with what I find. So what I want to check here is just loosening one of the wheels. Because I have not found any difference in handling. I can't tell. I'm not the best driver. But I just can't tell. So I want to loosen one of the wheels. I know that if one of the wheels is damaged, the car behaves differently. Especially under brakes. So I want to see if maybe it behaves differently with just one wheel. So Brucey from Post Edit here. I found no difference at all. Loose wheels, tight wheels, didn't make a difference. What you're about to see, I think is more to do with the racetrack and the balance of the car. Maybe a bit of dirt. It's got nothing to do with the wheel. I can't replicate it consistently enough to know. I tightened the wheel on the driver's side and loosened the wheel on the passenger side, expecting the car to pull the other way, and it didn't pull at all. So I really don't think it makes any difference. All right, let's try the race. I'm gonna go down here to a white line, see uh, how fast I can get. Maybe not even the white line till I chicken out and hit the brakes. And I think the car will slow down going up the hill anyway. So I'm lined up basically with the end of this concrete bollard here. And let's go. I'm revving this one to where I think its fastest point is. Fourth, I think, is the fastest down here for this car. Hundred and forty before I start slowing down. That's perfect. Right, so I'm in the Olga. I'm lined up in exactly the same kind of spot. Now the Gunter had a bit of damage on it and I'd used a bit of uh, water and fuel from it. Right, we'll give this a go. So the Gunter also had a five speed gearbox. I believe this one only the Olga only has a four speed gearbox. So we 
got to 140. Turn the lights on. 122. Alright, I am in the Saka. Now, this is a cool little car. This reminds me of my first car. So, same spot. Let's go. Oh, turn the lights on. It's getting dark. Gunter is leading at the moment. I want this car to do well. Air cooled. Brilliant. Don't need to worry about radiator damage, all that sort of stuff. Engines in the back, less likely to kill it when you crash into something. Again, only a four-speed gearbox. Well, oh, what do you know? The little hatchback is a hot hatchback. Definitely feel higher in the Ada. Nice little SUV. I think it's also called an off road hatchback. So let's go. Got a bit more of a low range gearbox from the feel of it. Again, only a four speed. I might top out. Redlining. The engine's not liking it. 123. Good brakes. Makes a good noise. Oh, look, I even did a skiddy. Alright, same spot in the off road Humvee. It's got some pretty intense lights on it, doesn't it? Let's go. So it's an automatic. Two, three. Four. Very low range. Looks like something got a four speed gearbox. Doing all right. It's cranking. 23. Jump on the anchors. All right, ready to go in the truck. We're right at the edge. You can just see it there. Let's go. Very low range gearbox. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you got something out of that. Um, it's very interesting the way the lights all shine in your eyes. They don't all work. They're all here. All the lights are on. But I hope you got something from that video. If you did, uh, please let me know by giving the video a quick thumbs up and subscribing if you haven't already. 
Um, and if you've got any feedback or comments you'd like to add yourself, just put them in the comment section below. That'd be great. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Mm.